Today we're talking about the, the demand curve. Actually, the supply and demand curve. But let's start off with demand. Now, the demand curve is associated with two variables. That's the cost and the quantity demanded. Now, in reality, the demand curve can look something like this, or demand curve can look like this. But for the sake of explanation, we're just going to assume that the demand curve is a straight linear relationship. Now, let's consider a rideshare company. Let's say the cost to access this rideshare company, all right, here I got Lyft, it can be anyone. Let's say it was really, really high to participate or, or catch a ride or uh, get a ride with that rideshare company. Then the demand that will exist would be very low. But if it was really cheap to use that rideshare company, then the demand for the quantity of ride shares would be very high. And so that straight line relationship looks a little bit like this. Now, if the costs were to increase, of course, the quantity that's demanded will also start to decrease. And so there's an inverse relationship between the cost for a service or product and the quantity that's demanded for that same service or product. The demand for one type of service can affect the demand for another. Say this public transporting service, it has its own demand curve. Now, if this rideshare company were to increase its cost, then the quantity demanded for that service would go down which means that the people who were using that ride share would have to find some alternative mode of transportation, in which case they may turn to the public transportation. Now, a simplistic way of looking at this is that whenever the demand increases, your demand curve shifts to the right. In this case, this is what it'll look like. Conversely, when your demand decreases, your demand curve shifts to the left. Increase right, decrease left. Sometimes it's just not that simple. Not only do you have to look at the demand or the competition between two types of transportation or modes for that demand, but you also have to look at the supply. As I tell my kids, just because you want it doesn't mean it's going to exist. And so look at the supply curve. It has the same relationship between the cost of supplying that service and the quantity of that service, but it has a different relationship. Instead of it being inverse, it's a direct relationship between these two on the positive side. So let's just take it for example. If the developer or the provider uh, was, could, and they possibly could make a lot of money from supplying a lot of quantity they would definitely do it and they'll continue to do it as long as that price can be set high. But as long as the price starts decreasing, that provider would have less of an encouragement to continue to provide that same service at a high quantity. And therefore your supply curve has a positive relationship between these two variables. Let's take a look back at demand. Now, if the demand curve was a simple curve like this, and we assumed that it was an, at a happy medium where the quantity wasn't too high, nor the price. But let's say the demand were to increase. If that were the case, then the, the, then the demand curve would move upward or the price would increase. And therefore, you would have a new quantity that's demanded at a specific higher price. Now, if you are a supplier, that price would be a really happy price for you because you can make more money. Now, let's say that supplier was okay with that price. And we're moving on to the supply curve, taking it at that same happy price there 
and we were to move that supply curve over a little bit and drop it down now you have a new quantity that is supplied based on that same price that was associated with a lower demand now it's just simply using price as a, as a determinant of how much you would supply would automatically or eventually cause an imbalance in the market for instance if you said um, we are going to supply more seats on a bus or increase the number of seats that are available on an aircraft simply because we had a few people who were demanding um, a certain price or were able to pay a certain price we're going to set that price and therefore determine how many seats we need you can cause an imbalance in the market and here's the reason why again at that same price you would have an associated quantity that's demanded but you would also have an associated quantity that is supplied and they're not equal to one another and so therefore that excess or that distance is the excess of supply that exists simply because one price determined how much was supplied so that means that there may be an excess of seats overall or an excess of scooters or whatever it is that you're marketing to sell as a or provide to the customers and so this is not good for business anytime you have too much of something so what eventually ends up happening is that excess supply that we have or those empty seats will eventually turn to cheaper prices so that the seats can be filled when you have cheaper prices your the demand is going to increase and if your demand increases so does the price drop and so you have increase in demand and the price drop and so the demand starts moving towards the middle and your supply is already moving towards the middle until there is something called an equilibrium at the middle that will eventually be the correct quantity now let's consider what might happen if something were subsidized so right now you can see that they have this equilibrium right in the middle but let's just say uh, for whatever reason uh, the city council or the state officials believe that they want to add more bus rapid transit to that area because they want to get more people to a specific location faster at a, at a, at a sufficient rate or um, you can look at it another way you can say uh, you want to provide more high speed access to information i.e. the internet to places that are not as um, accessible or doesn't don't have that same type of access to high speed internet uh, you can look at internet now this is arguable but some people look at internet as uh, a good it's a good that's being supplied um, a good of information being supplied and so transportation uh, could arguably be considered uh, part of the internet structure but regardless of what it is let's just say the entities involved would like to subsidize that means they will want to supply more access or more seats or more availability to get from one part or location to the other and so what they're really doing is they're saying hey we want to provide or supply more now by supplying more we move that supply curve over and by moving the supply curve over you can see here that now if we hold the the demand constant so that's an assumption if we're holding the demand constant and moving more supply our price decreases a little bit so you have your old price and this is your new price here so as a supplier this is actually good because now the cost 
of me to provide that same type of service, a quantity of service, has decreased because I've been subsidized. Now, when we subsidize demand, we are increasing the amount of potential that the consumer has to increase its quantity. And so, therefore, we are increasing the demand as well. Subsidizing the, the demand would be something like uh, providing discounts or vouchers to seniors to ride on public transportation, or maybe providing a, a greater access or discounts again to uh, have uh, free internet or a discounted price for internet for education. Um, let's just say for purposes of the times that we're in, um, we need more internet access to more places, uh, more reliable access. And so therefore, it may be in the best interest of subsidizing uh, people who wouldn't normally be able to get that so that, again, you can con continue to run the economy and ultimately um, maybe even generate some uh, income or gross domestic product in some shape or form. So there's many different ways why you might want to subsidize demand. But what eventually happens here is that you're increasing the quantity demanded because the potential to access that quantity has increased. Now, what you may notice here is that if you increase that, assuming this was the equilibrium or the quantity at which it was balanced, um, you might say, well, if we do that, with keeping supply constant, the price actually increased. And that's true uh, at first look. But what's really happening is that is this if that was the original price kept at the increased demand or subsidized demand, the price will fall to a smaller price or lower price for those who are demanding that service. And it will make more sense when we place them all together. So let's see if we can bring this all together. In the orange, you have the original demand curve and in green you have the original supply curve here okay and they meet up at equilibrium right at the middle now let's assume that uh, a subsidy was paid to the consumer all right so it's paid to the consumer so we subsidize uh, the rider someone who's riding on the transit or the consumer and by doing so we move that curve to the right now you notice after we move the curve to the right um, automatically we had a higher price but that is assuming that we kept the supply at the same rate and so there's a higher price because now there's a greater cost associated with providing more service to an increased demand or at least providing the same service to an increased demand so it's going to be a higher price associated with that higher cost you may need more people or you may need more routes whatever it is but if you were to say subsidize the provider Or the operator of the transportation service then you can increase the amount of supply for the demand that was initially uh, needed and so by doing that by increasing that supply you move your supply curve over now you have two prices now this price is the equilibrium and this is the price at which our consumer would now pay. And this is the price that is subsidized such that the provider would now get. And so all of this in the middle here. is what 
the government provides to uh, provide that service, not only so that the provider can provide the service, but also that the consumer can access that service. So all of this in the middle here is what basically the government or whoever is subsidizing this service needs to pay in order for it to happen. Now, in reality, the supplier's price increased from this point A to point B, and therefore the government pays that much to the supplier or the provider or the operator. But the cost that has decreased went from A to C from the consumer, therefore the government pays that. And the leftover price is what, or the leftover area is what they call dead weight. And this is the financial loss to subsidizing. Let's take another look at subsidizing supply because there's another way of looking at this. You know, there could be an unrecognized external cost to providing a transportation service, such as this same phenomenon could exist uh, in the sense that you would need to increase your supply. If, for instance, uh, the public transportation was so good and so reliable that there was just suburban sprawl and now you've had communities different communities spaced out from one another where they used to be all concentrated in one small location and you still want to provide that same transportation service and so the unrecognized external cost is that in order to connect every single one of these places, you would need to hire out maybe more uh, people, more drivers. And so that's an unrecognized external cost, which would increase your need to supply more and create the same phenomenon. You know, there may be an unrecognized benefit to drive up demand. Again, the same phenomenon would exist where there would be increased demand, say in public transportation, like a bus service, when people recognize that there's a medicinal benefit to riding the bus, because now you may attach your, your bike to the front of the bus and you can bike to work. You can also walk. All of these things require some mm -hmm. form of exercise. And there could be uh, uh, an e-bike, maybe, that you can take uh, that will bring you from the bus stop to work. And so all of these things are unrecognized benefits, external benefits um, that would increase the demand and therefore have the same phenomenon occur. So you have external benefits and external costs that could also uh, contribute to increased demand and increase in supply.